do we really want to do this? Do we really want to do this? And I have to be honest with you, we came close to saying in 2005 when my wife became pregnant, we, we had a big decision to make. We had to figure out what we really wanted to do. And, and I have to tell you, for a short while there, we strongly contemplated not having her. And we thought about that. Um, you know, and because again, our life was comfortable, it was good, we were in a routine, and we didn't know if we wanted to go back and do all those things that was necessary to take care of a child. Um, but, you know, very honestly, that, that thought didn't take long for us, to, for us to say, you know what, no, this is a gift from God, um, and Morgan is here for a reason. Let's find out what that reason is. It, it comes to, I've now figured out, it's, it's, she's here now to harass me and to cost me money. No, I'm totally kidding. I, I love my daughter. She is, she's fantastic. She is so helpful with the pets. She's so into dance. She's such a good and respectful daughter. She's got such a great relationship with my wife. She is an absolute blessing. And so we are really glad and happy that she is the fourth and final child in the Miller clan. So 2007, bring that was a banner year for us because I've been practicing for, for a while and I had never hit a million dollar resolution. Uh, and you know, you read the Texas Monthly, you look at the law journals and you see all these lawyers just hitting these really big numbers. It's like, gosh, what's, when's it gonna be my turn? When are we gonna have that big case? And for me, it was 2007. Um, we, we were working really hard. We had a really nice opportunity. We put a lot of time into it, a lot of effort into it, a lot of energy into it. And da-da, we finally rung the bell with our first million dollar resolution. And it was, it was big and it was important and it was great. But then what I kind of realized with that after, you know, a very short time was this is just another client. And why do I say this is just another client? Because even though it was a million dollar case, and I am very thankful for those million dollar cases because they come a few and far between, one of the things that I figured out is whether it's that $2,500 slip and fall case or that multi-million dollar wrongful death case, you've got to treat all of your clients the same way, at least in my opinion. You have to treat them the way that you would want to be treated if you, if they came to your office, if they needed your help, if they wanted your assistance. And to that end, one of the things that I do is that I'm always respectful to the clients. I understand that I, I, I'm beholden to them because they're trusting that I'm going to take care of them, that I'm going to listen to them, that I'm going to act in their best interest, that I'm going to get them the best possible outcome. And so whether it is that million dollar case or that $2,500 case, I treat clients the same way. Some lawyers don't do that. They just don't. You know, oh, what? I'm going to put all my eggs into this basket right here and this, that, and the other. Then they don't realize, well, gosh, when that case is settled, how come I don't have a bunch of other cases to, to take that place? I've never had that problem. I've never had that problem. You know why I haven't had that problem? Is because I treat every client with respect. Because what I've also understood is that $2,500 client that you treat like the million dollar case, while you may not make that much money from that particular case, they have cousins and sisters and brothers on the way to work today. And this is a true story. My wife called me and she said, one of our friends that we helped out, their family members just got hit by an 18-wheeler case and the accident is absolutely horrendous. They are definitely going to go with us, not because of anything other that I treat them a certain way. I pe treat people with respect and I help people and I talk to them. I don't worry about the money and all those types of things. I treat people the way I wanna be treated 
and then they in respect treat me with respect and then come back to us when they need legal help. Now we're going to talk about that first big loss. And it, it, it's difficult for me to talk about even today, okay? We took on a mass tort case out in, um, out in Missouri City um, against a very major attorney who is still out there practicing today, Rusty Harden. We took on his group. Okay, um, I still believe in the claim, and um, we we had some, we had had some success with regards to some other mass tort cases, and um, and so just to make sure that we were doing everything the right way, we we brought in a couple of good friends that are single practice lawyers to help us make sure and maneuver through this case the right way, um, and so we built the case and we. We put it on and and I took all, all the expenses out and we spent over one million dollars on this case. Took it to trial and we lost. A million dollars of my own money that is never coming back. And that was hugely devastating to me. The money was huge. It was huge with, with regards to taking this loss. Oh my gosh, we had borrowed money, we had done this, this is on me, and oh my goodness, that was awful. But the worst part about that situation was that we had developed relationships with these clients. Myself, especially Ramesh, and other lawyers in the firm, we worked really hard on this litigation. And quite frankly, I, I still don't know today why we really lost that, but man, that took the wind out of my sails. It, it hurt. That, that defeat really tested some things because after that, it's like, man, do I still want to do mass tort work? Do we still want to take these risks? Do we still want to take these chances? That was tough. But I got to tell you, after about a week, I said, hell yeah, we want to. That's what, we, that's what we're here for. And you know what? Darren, put your big boy pants on. The fact was I was able to come up with a million dollars of our previous money to put into this case because we thought the case was worth, worth substantially more than, than what we got out of it. Um, we were able to withstand that situation. And yes, did it take us a while to cr crawl out of that hole? Yes, we did. But what it did do to us was we ma it made us better lawyers. It made us do better research. It made us be better prepared to understand our enemies even better and to make sure that we would never lose another case like that again. And knock on wood, we've been fairly doggone successful with mass torts since then. But you know, again, I, it just comes back to even failing the bar twice, right? I'm a better lawyer now because I learned about success through my failures. And had I not had that failure then, I might not have last year sold that case for nine figures um, after all those years of hard work. So again, failure is a part of this process. Learn from those failures, embrace those failures, but just make sure you don't make the same mistakes again as you continue to move forward in reaching your goals. 2010. Um, again, we had a lot of success, a lot of pre-litigation success, a lot of mediation success, and I had made the decision, okay, I'm going to temper back on the mediation work because it was taking me out of the, the city and out of the office for several days at a time to take care of certain issues. And I wanted to build our firm. I wanted to build our legal team. And quite frankly, in my opinion, you're not a real a strong firm if you don't have a good litigation practice and we decided we wanted to have a good litigation practice we wanted to get some of the best cases in the state and we wanted to make sure that we, we were able to take it from tea to green and get the best results for the client so at that point we decided to grow our litigation practice and we brought in our heavy hitter mr. Andy Rubenstein excellent lawyer good friend uh, someone I'd worked with for many years before that. And 
and he helped to come in and clean things up, get rid of the junk, um, and make us think differently about the way in which you practice law. Andy is very much about the rules, about ethics, about outcomes, and I really appreciated that, okay? That was a different, he took on a kind of a different position than some of the other lawyers that we had dealt with before. And so what I also noticed was those outcomes that Andy was attached to were fantastic. Um, you know, I think when he started with us, he's, he's, he, he started with a, a six-figure average with regards to settling his cases. And from there, he just kind of, in, he just, in, 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 uh, injected just this thrill of excellence, this feeling of security in, in making decisions, uh, making good decisions. He brought that to the team and to the table. And because of that, we were able to kind of expand the types of cases that we worked on. And we didn't just look for cases that were cookie cutter, that were simple, that were easy. Because now we had Andy involved and Andy was gonna bring on Anoush and the rest of our legal team to really kind of, okay, what can we do here? How can we challenge ourselves? What can we do differently? And then we could bring in cases from out of state. We could bring in more challenging issues. And Andy was able to do that. And ever since that, it's been kind of a skyrocket moving forward to some really great, fantastic outcomes, including even, I wanna say, uh, four resolutions this year, I believe so far, well into the seven figures. So again, he is doing a great job as well as the whole rest of the litigation team. And because of that, I'm just really glad that we made that decision to move forward and become really serious lawyers and move into the areas of litigation and do it seriously back in 2010. Present day firm. What does the firm look like now and where is it going into the future? Um, honestly, I, I think it's, our opportunities are limitless. They, they really are. Um, we're taking on litigations in New York, in Utah, um, all over the country, in California, with all types of very difficult and com complex cases. Um, we've got a, a, a huge and fantastic litigation team. We've got great support staff, um, and we're doing great from, from a litigation standpoint. Our pre-litigation team is also, I'm, I'm just so proud of these guys with regards to the type of work that they're doing. They're bringing in cases, uh, bringing in their, getting our clients treated extremely well, getting the outcomes where they need to be, and financially the numbers are just working out fantastically. We've also now started doing a lot of um, abuse cases and bankruptcy cases. We have attorney Rochelle Guyton leading up that department and her new attorney, Gabby Becker. And they're just doing excellent work, doing what they do with regards to a lot of those types of sexual assault cases, which are housed under the area of law of bankruptcy. We're doing a bunch of mass tort work Okay, we're picking out particular cases that seem particularly egregious and we're moving forward with them. Our biggest new venture that we're moving forward on is the Camp Lejeune water contamination case. The fact that the federal government has known for many, many years that these issues are going on and did nothing about it, that's just wrong. It's not wrong. It not only did it harm families, it's killing them. It's killing them. And these Many of these families have been ruined just because of trying to save energy, time, and money. And so it is our job now to try and right those wrongs and do some of those things. So these are some of the challenges that we're taking on, and we're really proud about the work that we're doing. I'm also spending time just kind of teaching more and sharing more because I want lawyers to know that I've done some of these things and there is absolutely no reason, regardless of your background, regardless of the, the money that you have in your pocket or your bank account, that you can't be just as effective as I was, as I still am. And I'm willing to help you. If you've got questions about certain things or issues or concerns or things that you wanna do or pet projects that you wanna go over, 
I'm glad to introduce, make introductions for you or talk to you about it or tell you about my experiences. But most of all, I want to encourage you because we need people like you who have different perspectives coming into the law and telling us about your story and telling others and encouraging them and helping to make a, a change and make a difference with regards to the way in which law is practiced. I'm very proud of what we've produced, what we've done up until now, and I'm more proud of where we're going with this. We want to make real change in people's lives. We're doing that on a daily basis, and I want to do it even more. God has really blessed me with, with so much, and I want to share it with as many people as I can. I thank you for listening to what we've had to say, and stay in touch with us moving forward. Thank you. Attorney Darren Miller. I'm Attorney Darren Miller, and that's D-Law.